Hey, hey, so this video is about uh, basically me trying to get these two trucks ready for a comp. Uh, Sorka uh, at East Coast Scale Challenge is on uh, basically right now and uh, this is the end of this week and so I want to make sure that uh, I have the trucks ready to go. I'm operating class 1, class 2 and I have a truck for class 0 which I have been running already all year. The D110 that you guys all know about, um, it's been used uh, already for oh a scale a couple hundred miles already this year or more. Um, Maybe it's even a real couple hundred miles. It's actually, the truck's been around. I've been getting a lot of wheel time on it, so I don't need to do any real prep on that one right now. Um, the prep I have to do is gonna be on the class one and class two trucks. So that's kind of what this video is about, just to give you some tips on the stuff that I do to get the trucks ready. And of course the FJ Cruiser is an absolutely fresh build. And so um, it still doesn't have any of the regular, you know, driving maintenance kind of stuff that I've actually been doing on trucks my whole life. So anyway, I want to show you what I'm working on. A uh, couple of things that I think you guys are going to need. I highly recommend that you bring a voltage checker so that you can plug in your lipos and actually find out which ones are full, which ones aren't. And uh, when you're at comp uh, between courses, it's a good idea to just check and make sure that you don't end up starting a new course with a three-quarter dead battery. You know, it might be driving fine at the end of the first course, but when you get to number two, maybe it's low on power. I don't know. It's worth checking. I highly recommend that you uh, get a hold of one of these. If you don't, then uh, go see Nick at uh, Helios RC, and he will set you up with one of these. Uh, a lot of my batteries come with different plugs. Um, I buy batteries from Nick for uh, from Helios RC for the scale trucks. I also use these in my airplanes and stuff. So I have some of them with XT60 yellow connectors, and then I have some with Deans. And this truck runs an XT60 and this truck runs a Dean. So the way I got around that was actually using, I just made up these little plug dongles here and you can you can buy these. I mean hobby shops usually, good hobby shops I think actually have some of these on the wall already so you can just kind of buy them and plug them in. Usually there's a little bit of a wire in between just because. Uh, I made these up myself. Basically it takes the, the male Deans that's on the ESC and it converts it to a a male XT60 so I can now put this on my blazer and then run these batteries even though my blazer actually has a Dean's connector on it. Okay, so you see what I did there? I just gave me a chance to swap these over. Um, really simple. I actually have these going in both directions. So I have some of these that plug in that turn this XT60 into a Dean's battery. And then I have them the other way around as well that will turn a Dean's into a XT60. So, I recommend that you uh, either shop for these or find some or buy them or whatever because it seems like there's a lot of popular batteries now that come with uh, various different connectors, Traxxas sometimes as well if that's your flavor. Uh, but then you should have that stuff on hand and these are small enough to just fit right into your little lipo sack when you're carrying them around on the trail and then you can swap batteries with your neighbor or whatever you need and this will tell you if the battery's dead. So there's my battery tech. A um, couple of things that <clears throat> I always like to have on the trail. I think everybody should be carrying a four-way wrench on the trail or be with a group that has a four-way wrench because uh, as much as I try to keep my lug nuts and my lock nuts in good shape on the trucks, uh, they do tend to come loose after some decent comping. Um, and they wear out, right? The nylon, if the nylon in the lock nut has been used a million times, then the nylon actually turns into kind of like a thread. Instead of gripping the thread, it just becomes a regular thread, and so then it just slides and they're useless. So bring this just in case you see that your wheel falling off and check that before you go out on course, you know. Just get a hold of it, give it a wiggle, and take a look and make sure, and just, you know, make sure. If you have uh, hubs that have a special tool, uh, this is a GCM lock hub. Uh, our locking hubs don't use a special tool. We use an 8mm socket or a 5 16 socket. And so I have my 5 16 socket. It's just a hex driver, a uh, socket driver, sorry. 
and that will lock all my GCM lock wheel nuts down. But if you have an SSD or some other kind of a wheel nut that needs a special tool, make sure you carry it with your driver however you plan to turn that. Just a tip. Put that on your checklist. Uh, wrenches, really important. Your common ones are going to be 2 mil, 1.5, 2.5, stuff like that, unless you've got uh, some Vanquish wheels or whatever with a 440 uh, and then you need a Imperial 332 driver, whatever that size is. Uh, make sure you have a pair of needle nose. Um, at the very worst time, some kind of a nut will fall off your steering linkage or whatever at the worst time and then you're going to need one of these to get in there and tighten it back up. Bring that. So you really don't need a lot of tools on trail but I think these are sort of the essentials. Now. There's a bunch of things that I like to do to set up the truck before I go on trail. Uh, one of them is just to make sure that the suspension is actually all, all freed up and working. I had to go over the blazer um, this week and uh, I realized that after the call to crawl last, uh, last couple weekends ago I, I had bent some of my leaf springs. There were no helper packs on it or anything so I had to straighten those out. I put a helper pack in the back after having the, the thing driven pretty hard that weekend. Um, I looked over the front, check all your shock screws, make sure that your upper and lower shock mount screws are not falling out if you need Loctite on stuff or whatever. Also take a look in the, in the wheel hex, make sure you don't have a whole bunch of grass and fishing line or whatever else is wrapped around your wheel hex that's rubbing all your bearings to death. And then while you're under the truck, some of the best stuff to do is uh, do a little bit of lubricant on your CVD shafts, bearings, any kind of a moving part underneath. Um, if, you, uh, if you have uh, metal ball ends and metal rod ends, they're the balls and the rod end are both metal, you might want to lube those as well. I use this uh, fluid film stuff all the time. Uh, I think it's probably the best little product that I've ever used for uh, basically just getting rid of the wear on the truck. Um, because this build is fresh, we have to do all of the joints on this. Uh, this is a really simple process, but I think it has a lot of merit. So I'm gonna just spray a tiny little bit inside the CVD joint here, just a tiny bit, and then rotate that around. That just lets me put a little tiny bit of lubricant in there. Um, that will help enormously with, uh, with the wear and the drag on the CVDs. So some of the discussion that you might have about doing this kind of thing is, um, you know, what about the fluid that's in there picking up dust and, you know, creating dirt and more wear? Well, that might be the case in some kind of a really dusty comp environment but where we're going for most of our trail rides we either have some moisture or rock or heavy dirt there's no light dirt there's very little dust so um, it makes sense to just overlook that dust complaint and uh, go straight for the good stuff there I'm also going to do the CVD shafts and I think this is probably the most important one that, that I think it's really heavily overlooked um, I got a bit of a drip there, so I'll run that off of the rag. Now, the CVD shaft probably takes the most beating of anything in the truck. Um, they also tend to get a lot of moisture in them uh, just because of where they are. They end up getting splashed and beaten pretty bad. So. I'm going to put these in here, uh, get a little bit of lubricant in there, and while you're in there, or even better, while you're actually building the axles, it's a really good idea to put some kind of uh, lubricant or sealer or something on the bearings in the front as well, um, and in the back as well. Uh, even just a little tiny bit of spray on there will actually deter the water from getting into the wheel bearings. and. Um, that will help you cut down your maintenance for later on. So I recommend that. And you don't have to spray much in there, you just need a little bit. This stuff here, this uh, fluid film stuff, it actually creeps around really well. So, you know, within within a day or two, you're gonna see 
this fluid film stuff sort of making its mark all the way around um, the bearings, anything that you put it on, the CVDs, whatever it is. And uh, so these are all lubed up here now. Let me uh, open that up and I'll just aim that right into the camera so you can see right in there. So you don't need much, but you do need something. And that will actually drive shafts the same. That should really cut down the wear on the front end, uh, especially the drag. And the good news about doing stuff like that is you can uh, just respray it. You know, next time if you get in the water or whatever, you can just respray it. That'll get rid of some of the moisture in the CVD shafts and then the drive shafts, and then keep going. Uh, shock shafts. I like to keep the shock shafts as clean as you can. If you happen to be out in a muddy environment, then wipe them off when you're done so that they don't end up driving dirt into the seal in the shock. That'll help. It might not be a cure, but it'll certainly help uh, to keep the thing you know, running well for years to come and uh, let, try to eliminate some of the wear. So the only, only other thing you really need to check and test for is uh, your steering endpoints on the servo. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting this maximum steering that you can without actually forcing the servo at the end. Um, if the servo, if the steering is already maxed out, but the servo is still pushing as hard as it possibly can, and it's going, ee, you know, if you're getting one of those, then basically all you're doing is heating up your servo, which will make its performance drop, and it draws more battery power for nothing. So setting the endpoints is kind of important, and if you don't have a radio that will do it electronically, then most of the other radios actually will have a dual rate steering knob, like even a factory. Uh, old school axial, you know, two channel radio will have some kind of a knob in it for the steering dual rate. Um, and that's actually what you will use to set the end, to kind of bring in the end point so the servo is not laboring so much at full, full blast. Um, a few things like that will help out. Also, um, you want to make sure that uh, you don't have any, if you have beadlock tires, you want to make sure that your beads are not falling out. Um, I think that's kind of a, that's one of those things that doesn't actually happen much in modern, more modern equipment these days, but uh, certainly in the beadlocks of the past, uh, there's been fitment issues with tires and stuff. So, you know, it's pretty common for you to be just turning a corner too fast and have the bead roll out of the tire, even though it's a beadlock. So check those over and make sure that you've got, you know, a decent setup there that's not gonna fall apart during comp. Um, again, none of that is as important on the trail if you're out for trail runs because for trail runs you can stop and take time to do stuff, but when you go to a timed course event, you got to check all this stuff ahead of time. Uh, so those are my tips and tricks. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, do some pretty fun course riding with the Class 2 Comp Toy here as well and the, the GCM Baja Blazer. Um, looking forward to that. I've got a lot of wheel time on the Blazer already. I'm really comfortable with how it rides. Uh, the setup is, is quite satisfactory for me. And then uh, when we get some wheel time on the Comp Toy, we'll have some, some new ideas on how to, how to improve on that. Uh, I think the setup is probably something I will already like. It's very common for some of my Leaf trucks to have the same setup, so looking forward to it. Uh, I want to say I've got the big SSD aux winch on the on the comp toy and this one I've got the old three racing winch, winch. and I want to make a note about that because uh, this has actually come up in a couple of discussions recently on uh, Facebook feeds and um, in the forums and stuff The three racing this is the small winch okay not the big one this is the really small one the one tenth size that they say this winch used to be amazing um, the, winch, the winch I actually have on this truck was on my original Black Raven Jeep, which was I think seven years ago, maybe more than seven years ago. Uh, this is the original three racing winch and coupled with a proper relay controller, I use Hey OK, the winch will pull three trucks straight up a hill uh, like deadlift, it's amazing. So this winch is incredible. Now with that said, we have recently bought new winches. Um, the newer three racing winches are pretty much like a powered snail. Okay, they 
I just sent Steven into some laughter there. <laughs> okay, I put I bought a new three racing to put on here because I like the size of it. It was good for the truck. Uh, it couldn't even pull the pull pal across the ground. Uh, the winch was horrible. For, for four amp relay controller or not, three S didn't matter. The winch was horrible. So the new three racing small winches really just simply don't have the power that they used to. I pulled this one off of the original Raven comp truck uh, from my class two from years ago, from all the way back to 2013 when I was comping with this winch. Uh, I put this winch, <coughs> this winch on the same setup in the Blazer, and it will it will happily pull three trucks around all day. The winch has an insane amount of power, so there has been some changes to these winches. I have recommended these in the past, uh, but having had some new experiences with some of the fresh stock that they're putting out, the new stock uh, obviously requires a new motor and gearing to make them small but good. The old ones are good. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm about ready to hit the dirt uh, with these two trucks and hopefully all the uh, wheels don't fall off and uh, I think we've done our due diligence. We've, I'm going to bring some tools. We've got everything lubed up here and should be good to go. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of you guys at East Coast Scale Challenge. Thanks to Matt and Ed for all your hard work to put that event on and we'll see you guys at the end of the week. Comp away.